So we've all been there. You build a new gaming PC, you hit the power button, and oof, nothing happens. Nada. No fan spin, no power, no lights, no nothing. Or maybe you are lucky, quote unquote, lucky, and you get some lights, but you get no display output. Well, don't panic. Typically, you can resolve whatever is preventing your PC from posting by following these steps. And if these steps do help you out, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know which step resolved the issue for you. All right, so let's start with the easy stuff. So you hit the power button, you get nothing. No lights, no fans, no nothing. Make sure that you've turned your power supply on. That's right, your power supply has its own power button. So make sure you click the I for I'm on because the O is basically off or I'm off or whatever you wanna say there. Now alternatively, if your power supply was already on, you can check your front panel connectors. Make sure that you've properly wired the case into the pans for the power on and off and not the power LED on and off, which is a common mistake. Now, if it was wired correctly, congratulations, but you still could have an actual issue with the wire. So what I would suggest just for testing is go ahead and short the power pins between the plus and minus and see if your PC comes on. If it does, it means you got a faulty wire and you probably need to RMA the case. Now, if you still got nothing out of that, make sure that you have the 24 pin motherboard and the eight pin or four pin, depending on your motherboard, uh, EPS or CPU cable fully seated and connected to the motherboard. Those are the ones that you'll need to get everything up and running. Now, if it's still not running and you're not getting any lights or fans or anything like that at this point, try to use the jumper that might have come with your power supply and see if your power supply actually turns on. If it doesn't, there are ways to actually use a paper clip to short the power connections inside the PSU itself. Uh, just make sure if you're doing any of that that you have it completely disconnected from your motherboard. And I'm not going to teach you how to do the paper clip test uh, with your power supply, so find another YouTube video for that. Sorry. But if your power supply doesn't come on at all, even after jumping it, then it is likely that you're going to need to either exchange, return, or RMA your power supply. Now at this point, it is possible that your CPU is the issue if you're still not getting any lights or fans or anything else. However, it's pretty unlikely. Typically, your CPU would give us something uh, before it failed, but we'll cover that in the next section. All right, if you're lucky enough to get lights and fans but no display output, this next section is for you. All right, so first let's make sure that your monitors are actually plugged into the right spot on your gaming PC. If you have a dedicated graphics card or GPU, you should make sure that you're plugged into those ports on your PC and not the motherboard ports. Because even if your CPU has integrated graphics, a lot of motherboards will actually disable the onboard ports if it detects that there's a dedicated GPU installed. And if you only have integrated graphics, well, you can't really mess that up. It at least I don't think. All right, next you should make sure that your monitors are on the right input. So HDMI for HDMI, DisplayPort for DisplayPort, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, just depending on what you have. All right, so if you still haven't gotten a post by now, strap in. Things are gonna get a little rough, but just have a little patience. I know you can do it. Now, if you have a debug LED on your motherboard, start there. You can actually jump to whichever section it stops on. Remember, to get a post, you just need CPU, RAM, and GPU, or graphics working. Everything else is just secondary. So if the debug LED stops on any of those sections, you can jump there. Just keep in mind, the debug LED is not always correct, so you may have to go through all these steps anyway. And if you have one of those fancy motherboards that gives you actual numbers for the display code, Google that. Try to get a head start on everything. All right, so the next steps here for your motherboard, if you bought it used or open box or Amazon warehouse, anything like that, you wanna to try to reset your CMOS. Now, if you brought the motherboard new, it's probably not gonna do anything to reset your CMOS, but you can still do it. To reset the CMOS or the BIOS on your computer, it's pretty much different for each motherboard, but it's usually some combination of removing the battery from the motherboard and then jumping the pins, either JBAT1 or CMOS or clear CMOS, or it's labeled different for each board, so you will need to look it up. Just make sure that you have it completely disconnected from the power before you start doing any of that. Now, while you're looking up the instructions on how to clear your CMOS, you may wanna also check your BIOS and CPU compatibility. Keep in mind, some of these motherboards support multiple generations of processors, and as a part of doing that, you have to update the BIOS to get to the latest version so you can install the processor that's supported. Unfortunately, you have to have either a BIOS flashback to be able to do that without a CPU, 
or you're gonna to have to have a previous gen processor to upgrade to a newer version. So it does become kind of a pain sometimes to get there, but double check that your CPU is actually compatible with the BIOS that's on that board. And unfortunately, if you don't get any display out, you don't really know what BIOS is on the board. Now, if you've gotten this far and you still don't have a post, we need to start looking at the RAM as the culprit. So what I would do first is just reseat the RAM. Now the RAM, typically speaking, reseating it will fix a lot of your problems. However, if just reseating it doesn't work, what we need to do is actually take one stick at a time and put it into each slot on the motherboard and then see if you get a post. If it doesn't, use the other stick of RAM and repeat the same procedure. Now if you can get it to post in with one stick or the other, then you've got a bad stick of RAM and you may need to exchange it for a kit that's actually working. Now if you can get them both to post at the same time but not in the same or the correct memory channels on the motherboard, then you may need to actually uh, look at the processor because you could have a bad memory channel and typically that's going to be processor related, though it could also be motherboard related. Now, if you use both sticks of RAM and you still don't get a post at all, then I would say it's probably gonna be CPU or motherboard for the issue. Typically, you'll get one bad stick of RAM. Uh, it is possible to get two bad sticks of RAM, but like I said, typically, you're just gonna get one or the other's bad. I don't know that I've ever actually gotten a kit with both sticks of RAM being bad, but it is certainly possible, just not very probable. All right, now that we've eliminated everything else, let's look at the motherboard and the CPU. So on the motherboard, especially for an Intel processor, take a look at the actual socket and see if you see any bent pins. They're gonna look something like what's on the screen now. Now, if you do have bent pins on your motherboard, I would suggest trying to either RMA or exchange it if you can. Now, if you bought it used and you can't get your money back, you can try to bend the pins back, but it is a very long and very arduous task to actually bend the pins back into place. And a lot of the times they break. So if you can't get your money back or do a refund or exchange, then I would say go ahead and try it. You don't really have anything to lose. However, it's probably 50-50 whether or not the bent pins on the socket are going to break or not. So like I said, I would much rather have you RMA or exchange that motherboard than try to bend the pins back. Um, there are a lot of good tutorials online about bending pins back on the socket. Uh, you can check on those. I'm not gonna go over it here. Like I said though, it's much easier if you can just exchange or RMA that motherboard to go that route. Now for AMD users, it's a little bit different right now. So AM4 uses PGA. So the pins are actually on the processor and not on the motherboard. Typically speaking, if you had bent pins on the processor, it wouldn't be able to go into the socket. So it's probably not an issue there. However, there could be some broken pins. So you wanna make sure that you check that for broken pins as if you see any broken pins, that's probably your issue. And then keep in mind, if you are on AM5, which hasn't launched at the time I'm recording this video, but if you're seeing it later, then that same advice I gave for Intel processors with the bent pins on the motherboard would now apply to AM5 users. However, uh, I, I don't have an AM5 board or an AM5 processor because none of them have actually released yet. So same thing, just AM5. So hopefully at this point you have a PC that's now booting and make sure that you leave a comment to let me know where it actually resolved it. If unfortunately you don't, you might want to jump onto the Pinky Tech Discord server and we can help you out trying to see if we can think of anything else to get your computer up and running. And if your computer is posting at this point, maybe a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 install would be great and help you with your journey here. As always guys, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.